What on earth is this food? Huh? My mother-in-law, Pam, exclaimed, tossing my container straight into the trash. What are you doing? How could you bring these leftovers? Biting back my words, I tidied up the spilled food, shooting her a sharp look. I'm out of here. And don't come back. I'm Maggie, a 30-year-old office worker. So here's the news. I just tied the knot with Richard. We first crossed paths on a group blind date. Honestly, I almost bailed. But a friend convinced me to balance the group. Who knew? Fate was calling. Richard totally caught my eye. Super charming and easy on the eyes. Chatting with him was super engaging and I found myself being attracted to him. We swapped our numbers and the texting began. Dinners, movies, the usual couple stuff followed. Every hangout was pure gold. We were totally into each other. After going out for a bit, he spilled his feelings and boom, we were officially a thing. Everything was on the up and up with us. His date game was strong, had me on cloud nine. I was head over heels, especially seeing how he treasured me. About a year in, he hit me with a big question. Maggie, I can't picture life without you. Forever together, sound good? Will you marry me? Absolutely. And just like that, wedding bells were in the air. Then came intro time. We met the folks. Richard, being genuine, really clicked with my parents. They were all, Treat our girl right. Promise she's in good hands. Phew, parents approved. Now the tables turned. Time to meet his family. Walking up to their place, I was mad nervous. His place was straight out of a history book. Is your family kinda a big deal? Legend has it, Grandpa owned this posh jewelry spot. Cashed in, built this mansion. This is home base. Gotcha. Chit-chatting, the front door swings open and there she was. His mom. Nice to meet you, I'm Maggie. Step inside. Her poker face game was strong. I hoped for more warmth, but okay. Inside, dad-in-law was chilling. Did the intro thing and got a supernatural. Pleased to meet you. Awkward silence filled the room. Richard, trying to lighten things up, was like, Oh yeah, we brought some treats. Mom's face lit up, if only for a sec. Thanks, we'll snack later. I mean, I expected tea time now, but okay. Is she not feeling me? She just took the gift and sat there. Come to think of it, they didn't give me anything. No coffee or cookies. I felt a bit of that cold shoulder. The conversation was super stilted, as expected. Richard, Mr. Optimist, launched into our wedding details. My mother-in-law, Pam, couldn't resist. When you're marrying into this family, there are rules. Go on. Big house, right? Family get-togethers are a monthly thing here. All right. We expect you at every shindig. Plus, pre-party setup? That's on you. You're kidding. She went all ultimatum on me. What? I glanced at Richard. He tried to soften it. It's kinda how we roll. Hope you get it. I really want this to work, but monthly family bashes sound daunting. Is this even a good idea? Doubts were creeping in. This might be over your head. It's a high society thing. Her smirk? Ugh. Felt like she was looking down on my family. Not cool at all. It's all good. I hope to get along with the family. She looked thrown off. Great, I'm eager to see. Her eyes were just as fiery as mine, and that wrapped that day. Later, the whole family jam happened. Pam was still talking sarcastically. After my folks asked me if I was sure about marrying Richard and into his family, I totally got where my parents were coming from, but I was smitten with him at that point. Plus, I felt that backing out would be letting my mother-in-law win, so the thought of canceling the wedding didn't even cross my mind. We had our beautiful wedding, jetted off on our honeymoon, and started our married life. About a fortnight later, we had one of those family gatherings Pam had talked about. We decided to give it a shot. I was curious if the rest of the family would be more welcoming, or if they'd be as frosty as her. Stepping into their home, there she was, seemingly waiting just for me. Took you long enough. 
hurry up and get ready. She said, her face as cold as ice, and steered me into the kitchen. I slipped on an apron, and she said, You're on food duty for 20 today. I thought to myself, are you kidding? Why such a big get-together outside of holidays? Cooking under her watchful eye was daunting. She critiqued me non-stop. You're all thumbs. Do you even know how to handle a kitchen? Your chopping's all over the place. But I've always been confident in my cooking. Heck, I felt she wasn't any better with a knife. Maybe she was just looking for excuses to nitpick. I brushed her comments aside, focusing on the task at hand. Time was ticking and guests were coming. After wrapping up in the kitchen, I felt wiped out. I was about to catch my breath in the living room when my father-in-law Wally chimed in. Hey, could you set the table? So there I was, laying out dinnerware. I was dying for a breather, but no chance. With everything set, I plopped down on the sofa with some water. Pam was quick to notice. Why are you sitting? Say hi to everyone! It felt a bit over the top since I was merely resting for a second, but I figured I should mingle, so I headed over. The room was packed. I was overwhelmed. About 20 folks, just like she said. Some looked familiar from the wedding. As I introduced myself, they all responded warmly. When they got a taste of the food I'd prepared, the compliments rolled in. You made this, Maggie? Yes, I hope you enjoy it. It's outstanding. Well done. Much appreciated. They were genuinely lovely. They ensured I took a break, even reminding me to eat. Thank you for making all these dishes for us, Maggie. Their thanks was heartwarming, but in the middle of a conversation, Pam beckoned. Why are you lazing around? She quipped. I'm not. I was just mingling. You should be serving, not chatting. I'll do the talking. What? It felt like she was purposely sidelining me. My brief bonding time with the family was all I got. She kept me running errands the whole party. And the post-party cleanup? A total nightmare. She barked orders, but didn't lift a finger. With Richard and his dad out cold from too much booze, the cleaning was all on me. Once done, she said, Nice work. You can head out now. And shooed me away. My husband was out cold, and she sent me home by myself. I left utterly drained and miffed. Her behavior was one thing, but my husband's indifference? That stung. He seemed to have had a blast, oblivious to everything. I felt alone, realizing he wasn't my ally. The next afternoon, he finally showed up. Why'd you bail last night, Maggie? What'd you mean? Your mom sent me packing. That doesn't sound like my mom, he said, clearly taken aback. Well, she did. She's been riding me since the party prep started. His face went from disbelief to anger as I filled him in. Enough with the lies. Why do you keep lying like this? Have you lost your mind from drinking too much? Honestly, I was dumbfounded. I never imagined he'd trust his mom so much more than me. Even with his parents' previous antics, I held on to the hope that he'd back me up. But that hope vanished quickly. From that point on, I started having doubts about him. I questioned whether we could keep going like this. We were newlyweds after all, just about half a month in. I figured I'd give it a year, if only for the sake of the folks who celebrated with us at the wedding. With that resolution, I kept going with our marriage. He tends to bounce back after blowing up, so thankfully, everyday life wasn't like walking on pins and needles. A month later, another gathering at the in-laws loomed. Prepping myself, I made my way there, curious about how many I'd be cooking for this time. I greeted. Good morning, Pam. Come to the kitchen right away. Per usual, she was straight to the point. Donning my apron in the kitchen, I noted fewer ingredients. Asking how many guests to expect, she responded dismissively. Seven. Just seven? Got a problem with that? Um, no. I was taken aback. Last time, it had been way more. But seven felt doable. With that mindset, I began. Yet, like clockwork, she found flaws with every move. With fewer attendees, I hoped to actually enjoy the gathering. But the opposite happened. 
that I'm now able to monitor me more closely kept me on a tight leash, denying me any downtime. It was draining, even more so than last time. And my husband? He just immersed himself in food and had fun, leaving me to tend for myself. Post-party, the men crashed, and Pam, lounging on the sofa, ordered me to handle the mess. More beat than before, she had me out the door soon after with a snarky, Strangers can't stay overnight here. Only family can. So you better leave. Honestly, I was ready to leave. Dead tired, I hailed a cab, went home, and crashed. The next day, my husband strolled in, grumbling. You're so selfish. How could you just bail on the family? I was dumbfounded. Your mom literally told me I'm not family and sent me home. But this only made him angrier. Why the lies? I can't believe you'd stoop this low. His words stung. I told myself I couldn't handle another episode like this. A few weeks later, he mentioned a major family gathering. Too much cooking for one morning at my folks. Maggie, they want some dishes prepped in advance. I begrudgingly agreed, thinking it'd just cause more issues if I declined. After a full day of cooking, I packed everything up. Cooking from home spared me any nagging from my mother-in-law. I got to their place early, prepping for the 50 expected guests. Once all arrived, Pam announced, Thank you for coming. The meal will be out shortly. Enjoy some drinks in the meantime. She seemed to revel in playing hostess. She signaled me for the food. As I started unpacking the dishes to transfer them, she exclaimed, What on earth is this? What do you mean? There's quiche, fried chicken, the dishes you asked for. Who'd eat such mundane food? In a shocking move, she tossed my dishes in the trash right in front of everyone. What are you doing? How could you bring these leftovers? I apologize, everyone. My daughter-in-law made a mistake. But don't worry, I've prepared some exquisite appetizers for you all. Turns out she'd planned this humiliation from the start. After I spent hours in the kitchen, she carelessly discarded the food right in front of our family, making me feel small. It was clear she was trying to push me around, aiming to have me in her grasp. How she managed that with such ease is baffling. Without uttering a word, I tidied up and shot her an icy look. I'm out of here. And don't come back. And just so you know, I want a divorce. My outburst left my in-laws and husband speechless. Their only reaction was a stunned, what? Wait a minute, Maggie. How'd you jump to divorce? This wasn't on me. We just celebrated our three-month anniversary. Imagine the gossip. He complained. Looking back, I should have pulled the plug on this earlier or skipped the wedding altogether. A voice from the crowd said, Can't you see your why she's thinking divorce already? More voices pitched in. That's right. If he can't stand up for his wife against his own mom's antics, that's just sad. For real? From day one, Pam has been nothing but nasty to Maggie. And the silent duo, husband and so are equally bad. The relatives laid into the in-laws, who were visibly shaken. Hang on, everyone. What's the deal here? Pam stuttered as relatives began to rise. We can't stomach your antics anymore. Truth be told, these monthly invites are a total drag. We came out of respect for family, but seeing your constant digs at your daughter-in-law? We're done. Another voiced their agreement. Count our family out, too. As the room buzzed with movement and chatter, Pam's distress was clear. Wait, what did we do? Choosing to exit with a crowd, I heard my husband's desperate plea. Maggie, I messed up. Please, give me another chance. But a relative's response was swift. Grow up. Where were you when she needed you? Later, I got an attorney to set the divorce wheels in motion. He dragged his feet a bit, but the mention of court had him signing on the dotted line. Since that day, it seems, the in-laws' invite list has dwindled to none. Where it is, Pam's now a shadow of her former self. And my ex? 
He's become the joke at his office and around town, known as the guy who lost his wife in a flash. Rumor has it, work's not going so well for him. Can't say I'm surprised. Meanwhile, I've settled back with my parents and jumped back into my career. Thank heavens I hung onto that job post-wedding. For now, it's all about work and saving up. I've pressed pause on the whole love scene, but when I'm game to dive back in, I'll be vetting the in-laws for sure. <laughs>